praise the Lord. I'd like to take the word of God this morning and turn to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4. We can dismiss for our nursery and uh, also our children's church ages 3 to 6. We'd like to dismiss for that. It's a good number going back there. I believe that number up. Amen. That's good. We hear you screaming. We're going to run back there. Please we can. I pray for them. Appreciate the folks that do that. The little things that uh, go unnoticed in nurseries and children's church and things like that. Appreciate everybody coming out last night. We had a wonderful time last night. Fellowship. And I appreciate all that came out and helped with that. And I pray somebody got a blessing from that. Amen. Good stuff. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 1 through 7. <coughs> um, I'll share a few, few thoughts this morning. Pray to bless you and help you. Chapter 4. 2 Kings begin verse 1. The word of God tells us Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant. My husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save the pot of oil. Then he said, Go. And borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, and brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children off the rest. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. God, I pray you'd help <clears throat> preach me, Lord, this morning. God, I pray you'd start moving, Lord, Father, down through these aisles, down each pew, especially right behind this pulpit, Lord, God. So God, just thank you already for the <clears throat> worship, the, the Word and song, Lord God, enough to bless and move. So I don't want to mess that up, Lord God. And so I pray you'd help me get out of the way and just let you be God. So, God, I just pray this morning, Lord Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, sad situation here this morning in this family that we read about. And this mighty prophet, Elisha, what a man. Of course, he was the servant and a protege of Elijah, one of the great prophets of the Bible. Now, Elijah's gone. Elijah's left. And one of his students has died. Suddenly, it would appear. And his family's facing a crisis. And I hope this morning, well, first of all, that you can see the tremendous desperation this woman faced in her life. If you read that first verse along with me, you'll notice there were three things that she faced in her life that made her desperate. There's three things that she faced, there's three things that you face that's going to make your life desperate. If you're lost this morning, you are in a desperate situation. You'll notice that she faced death. The Bible said her husband had died. And so there's the first thing she faced was death in her family. We're going to face death, aren't we? The angel of death and his cold hands are going to come to each one of us, young and old alike. And he's going to grab a hold of us one day. And this death is the wages of your sin and my sin. 
We're going to face that one day. She faced death in her family. You're going to face death. The wages of that sin, according to Romans 6, 23, is death. Not only did she face that in her family, but she faced a debt that she could not pay. Did you notice that? <laughs> she faced, are, you with, are, you, are you following me this morning? Spiritually speaking, there's a debt that you owe this morning. There's a debt that you can't pay. It can't be bought by silver and gold. But it must be bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the only ransom for a sin sick person. In fact, 1 Timothy 2.6 He gave Himself, that is Jesus, as a ransom for all to be testified of in due time. And so she faced a debt that she couldn't pay. You may face that this morning. Your debt uh, may not be paid in full. And in fact, if you don't know Jesus Christ this morning as your Lord and Savior, you owe a debt and it has not been paid. Because He is the only one that can pay that debt. Yes. <coughs> and then she faced bondage unto a creditor, didn't she? <laughs> in other words, she faced death. She faced a debt. And she faced great duress. She was in a restraint. She was in bondage. It was as if she was in prison because she faced bondage from the creditor. She had a spirit of bondage on her. Well, I'm glad there's one Isaiah 7, 61, 1 said there's one that's come to open up the prison doors. There's one that's come to set the captives free. Because, listen, we're in bondage this morning if we don't know Jesus. In fact, I was in bondage one time before I got saved. I faced death and I feared death. And I had no sleep. I had no peace. I was in a great debt. I was in great desperation. And I needed somebody to, that could take care of all three of those. One who conquered death. That's who I needed. <laughs> I needed one to pay the ransom that I couldn't pay with my works and my silver and my gold. And I was in great bondage to sin. So I'd broken the law of God. That's what sin is, isn't it? It's breaking of God's law. And I had broken and broken and broken His law. I was born a sinner at, by birth. And then as soon as I could, I was a sinner by choice. <laughs> sinner by birth, I, I was in double bondage. And I needed someone that could come and release me, open the prison door. That's what she needed. She needed that physically. She needed that. Here in this story, a, a, a true historical account of her situation, but spiritually, as you and I this morning, every one of us. But notice that not only was it a desperate situation, but notice that she made supplication to the man of God. So you had desperation. And when you have desperation like that, the only hope that you have is supplication. Notice she went to the man of God. Now, uh, people who come to see the case with, with problems, and I'm glad they do. They ought to come to me. I want to be there for them. And people would come to Elijah because he was a man of God, and he represented, uh, he represented God to man, so to speak. But notice what he did. The Bible says there that he, he made a few phone calls to the creditor. That's what I would have done. I would say, well, listen, uh, uh, listen, sweetheart, let me, let me see if I can make a few calls and, eat, and I'll see if I can fix this thing a little bit for you. Wouldn't that be logical for me to do that? Or maybe I, I would have sit them down and said, listen, uh, let me see your financial plan for next year. Lay that thing out in front of me and I'll try to help you plan your money. I'll try to help you make some good choices here and, and we'll come up with a new financial plan for you. He didn't say that and, and listen, if that had been me, uh, unlike Elijah, I would say, well, let me just pray for you. Let me pray for you, honey. I, I, I feel for you. I, yeah, that's not what he did. <laughs> Notice what he did. Uh, you really have to understand a little bit about the, the way this is put together in the Hebrew, but maybe you got it anyway. Uh, he said this. He said, what can I do? That's what he said. You know what I'm saying? He said, what shall I do for thee? And what he says that, it, 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 when you read that, 
word, that's, in the Hebrew, that's what he's saying. He said, well, what can I do? Now here she is in desperation. She goes to the man of God and he says, what can I do? And on top of that, he goes on to say, why don't you just start at home? Mm. Isn't that what he said? In other words, Elijah said, listen, what have, I, what have you got at home and what are you doing with it? Well, that hurts, doesn't it? Well, if I told you that, you coming up, you can't. I said, what well, you got at home? What you coming to me for? Well, I said, what you doing to me? I, I can't help you. What do you got at home? Go back and use what you've already got. That's tough for a preacher, isn't it? I probably wouldn't do that to you. I'd do the other things. But that's not what Elijah did. <coughs> Listen, don't expect God to give you more when you're not using what He's already gave you. <laughs> Boy, that hurts, Amen. Isn't that right? Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what has thou in your house this morning? What do you got in your house this morning? She said, I ain't got anything. I ain't got one thing. Wait a second. I take that back, man of God. I ain't got anything, but I do have this little vessel. Of oil. I've got all I've got is this little vessel of oil. He said, okay, let's start there. You see, people already have so many blessings from God that they won't already use. But they expect God to give them more of what they're not using anyway. And you're following me on that, right? God's giving you money, but you won't tie it. But you expect God to give you some more money. He's giving you time because He makes your heart beat and He makes your lungs fill up with air. You realize that, don't you? You realize you can't add your heartbeat, right? Now, I know I'm in shape and y'all want y'all think I do this on purpose, but I, I don't. <laughs> Jay, you cleared your throat like you didn't say something. <laughs> you got your time, but you won't use it for God. But you pray for God to give you some more time, don't you? Amen. How about your talent? God's given each one of you a talent. But you won't use your talent for God. But you want more talent. You want to cut it more talent. I, I believe in here, every, every one of us, uh, God's given us a house. But you won't make it God. God's given you a car. But you won't drive to church. He's giving you health, baby, this morning, but you won't present your body as a living sacrifice unto God. Romans 12. In other words, don't expect God to keep giving you something that He's already given you that you won't use for Him. Secondly, don't just sit around waiting for a miracle. Or an answer to your prayer and do nothing. She's crying out to God. She's praying. And Elijah said, don't just sit around there. He said, why don't you be part of the miracle? Everybody wants a miracle, but nobody wants to be a part of it. Everybody wants to, to pray. Lord, please, I pray you'd save that. I pray you'd save some folks on this road. But you won't get up and knock on the door and give them a track. In other words, we pray so many times for something to happen in our life and all the time God is saying you are the answer to the prayer that you're praying. Yeah. Why don't you want to be the answer to the prayer you're praying? Lord, I want, I want a bunch of folks to get saved this morning in, in our Sunday service, but I'm not going to preach the Word to them. That'd be a silly prayer, wouldn't it? You want people to get saved, but you're not passing out a lot of tracts. You're not spreading a lot of gospel. <laughs> you know what the widow couldn't do? <laughs> she couldn't make the oil multiply. But the man of God said, you know what you can do? You can go door to door. Amen. <laughs> you can't make this. You can't get nobody saved. You can't do anything for them. I've got nothing at all to offer you. 
Well, I can tell you about Jesus. I can tell you what Jesus can do. I can point you in the right direction. You see, faith is the most useless thing that you have if it's not exercised. It is worth absolutely nothing if faith is not exercised. Would you agree with that? That's the whole principle, isn't it? In other words, it's just like exercise. And there's an analogy. Listen, if you exercise, and if you pump the iron, if you do a little bit of that stuff, you just naturally get a little stronger. You exercise your faith, friend, you get a little stronger. Amen. It's just as simple as that. Well, what a simple formula. How simple does God make it then? He said, we don't have nothing. He said, you don't have nothing. He said, wait a second. I, I got this little <coughs> vessel. I got this little bottle of oil. He said, why don't you start there? I'll make some applications this morning. Desperation. Supplication. Now let me make a few applications about the vessels this morning. Then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad with all thy neighbors, even empty vessels barred off you. Don't you know that she was a witness when she sent them boys out? They knocked on the door, can I, you got an empty pot? What you need that for? Well, let me let me say, <laughs> let me tell you, we hadn't really got anything, but God told us to take those empty bowls and he's going to fill them up for us. What? Go ahead. And you'll notice that they didn't say big vessels, small vessels, Wooden vessels, silver vessels, glass vessels. He didn't say, knock on this door, but skip that door, and knock on another door. You with me on that? Yeah. Let's go get the vessel. <clears throat> Did you notice the vessel had to be empty? Wasn't that right? <clears throat> For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I got Jesus in me. That's what he's saying. Amen. I got Jesus in me. Jesus is glorious, but my old vessel is just dust. He's the Word of God, but my words, uh, listen, are nothing. He's in me, I need to be empty. Less of me and more him. Amen. I must decrease that he might increase. That's what John the Baptist said. Not only does it need to be empty, but you'll notice there that the vessels need to be numerous. He said, not a few. Don't just go borrow four or five, but get all that you can get that you possibly can borrow and watch me fill them up. But in the end, the oil stayed because the vessel came up short, but the oil kept coming. Right. Jesus never fails. Amen. The vessel is going to fall short. The vessel is not going to be enough. She couldn't get enough vessels to outlast the oil. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Jesus never fails. No sister, not only did it have to be empty and numerous, but the pouring out was done behind closed doors. Hmm. Like the old song, when we get behind closed doors. Y'all know that song. Don't make like y'all ain't listening. <laughs> <laughs> she went from him and she shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. You know, at the beginning, <coughs> that would have thought she had nothing in that old house, didn't she? But had a little bit of oil left in that old house. I'm glad there's a little oil in this old house. He resides in this old temple, in this old house, this old earthen vessel. And when I think there's nothing left to give, when there's nothing left to preach, when there's nothing left to do, I realize that there's still just a little bit of oil up in here, bubbling out of the everlasting life. All you gotta do is just pour, baby, pour. Just pour. Philippians 2, 17, Yea, and, I, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. That word offered upon means to pour out. 
He said that again, Paul did, as his last words to, uh, that uh, we read there in 2 Timothy 4, 6 to his, his young preacher boy. That he said, For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I'm, I'm ready now. I guess I've been pouring out that oil. I've been offering that to the Lord. As a living sacrifice, I've given myself to the Lord. And they're fixing to chop my head off. These are the last words you're going to hear from your old uh, preacher buddy, Paul. Timothy, just keep on going because you know, and what little oil I got left, I'm fixing to pour it on out. I'm going to leave here empty. I'm going to leave here. There'll be no seeds in the barn. There'll be no treasure stocked up for me here because I've spent them all. I, I've spent. And I'm going out empty. I've used everything that you've given me, God. Do you notice that the widow was shut up unto the Lord before she could do any pouring? Do you see that? Listen, when we close the door, friend, to the world, to the outside, and we shut ourselves up unto God, that's when the Lord Jesus shows up. About the midnight hour, or when there's nobody uh, to talk to, or when you're on the bed and you feel all alone and the tears fall out, and there's nobody in the world that understands what's going on. And listen, everybody's walked out. That's when he walks in. And when he walks in, friend, he just shuts the door behind him. He says, let's, let's see what I can do now. You ever notice the shut doors in the back? Right here in this chapter, you'll see Elijah uh, when he raises the Shunammite's uh, uh, son there. It says he went in there for verse 33 and shut the door upon him and the other the little boy. You know what he done? You know what showed up when, when he shut everything out? Nobody went in there uh, but Elijah and he shut the door and there was a dead young boy in there. And, and, and when he shut the door, you know who showed up? The resurrection power of Jesus Christ showed up. That boy walked again. You remember over in Mark chapter 5, verse 40, uh, when Jairus' daughter was dead and in the bed, and, and he came in and he said, Look, don't what's everybody crying for? Him? He said, What's up? What's up? What's everybody crying for? He said, she, she dead. He said, No, she just sleep. You missed that. Y'all thought she was dead. And it says in verse 40, and they laughed him to scorn when he told them that. But when he had put them all out, <laughs> he went up into the room. Listen, there's no time for unbelief when you're shut behind the doors. There's no time for none of this sin and worldly mass. But he said, listen, uh, I'm coming in here. And he, he just kicked everybody out and he shut the door behind him. And he went in there in the resurrection power. And she rose up from the ground. Of course, there's a granddaddy of them all, isn't there? But his old tomb. There you go. <laughs> Had an old stone shut in it. Didn't it? Had, that, had it rolled over the Listen, you know what's going on in there? The resurrection power of Jesus Christ, what a powerful thing there is. And listen, when he shut himself up in that tomb three days later, listen, when he come back up out of the door, and you shut yourself up to God, and when you come out of that closet, friend, you'll see something happen in your life. You want him to show up? Then get shut into him for a little bit and see if he don't show up in your life. I just, listen, I'm here to testify. He showed up every time I needed him. Amen. When I shut myself up to him, he's never failed, not one time. He's come through every time with his resurrection power in my life and the finances, the healing, whatever it was. Hey, listen, he came in there, he shut the door behind him, and he said, It's on. It's just me and you now. I'll close with this. Notice this, that there were some of the vessels that were set aside. Did you catch that? Verse 4 says, As she shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is what? Full. It's the full vessels that get set aside. Isn't it? It's the sanctified, the consecrated. It's the, listen, it's the full vessels that's the vessels of grace. Or, it's the trophies of God. You know what I'm saying? In other words, you want to be used by God. He uses it. Listen, He loves to use a full vessel. Doesn't he? Are you a full vessel this morning? You know, people ask me all the time, what is God's purpose for me? But you'll notice it was only the full vessel that had a specific purpose in it. Didn't it? Isn't that right? When He filled them, they got set aside. 
But not only that, he said, go and sell them and pay the debt. In other words, the full vessel had a specific purpose. It's going to pay the debt. You get that right? The Bible said they went out and sold. The Bible said, go sell that, pay the debt, use what's full, and live off the rest. Do you know there's plenty left over to live off of? People tell me all the time, I'd spend, I'd get, I'd, I'd give it all, yeah, I just, I just don't know how long I can go, just keep going. Listen, when you think, when you come to the end of your rope, that's when he starts. That's right. I'm tired, I can't go on, I just want to give up. Don't give up. Right. There's plenty to live on. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of oil. It's not going to stop. It's the vessel that stops. It's the vessel that makes the oil stay. The oil is just ready to come. You know what the problem is, I believe, with me and with most people I talk to, we never get full enough to be set aside and used. We just never shut ourselves up to God enough to really see Him show out in our life. What have you got at your house? What have you got at your disposal that needs to be used for God? I wonder if we could just stand. What have we got here, fellas? Grab your hymn book and we'll sing a couple verses. What have we got? What is it, brother? <coughs> 480. 480. What have you got this morning at your house? Now, if you got a problem this morning, why don't you come bring what you got to God? Watch your music. He used what you got, not what you ain't got. Maybe you need this morning to be saved. Maybe you need the true oil. I'd like to share Jesus with you. We do that. Go ahead, fellas. You come. Are you using what God's giving you? Are you using your time, your talent, your stuff? Sing a couple verses. We'll give you, give you a chance. I want to give you a chance. Come set that stuff aside to the Lord. Listen, you're keeping something back. You're keeping what little you got back. Don't expect the God to use you in some bigger way. Why don't you use what you got? Not even one of you's got talent that somebody ain't using. Why don't you come give that to the Lord this morning? So I want to set this aside for you, Lord. Whatever you've given me, whatever little bit you've given me, Lord, I need to use it so that you'll bless me and give me more. Give what you got and watch God take that. Bless it. That principle applies. That principle is makes the Lord happy. He'll come through for you. He went it off. Maybe you say this morning, I don't know Jesus. I, I don't know about this oil. I ain't even got the little oil. I need the oil. I need to start out with a little oil. That means you need to be saved. That means the Holy Spirit needs to come into your life. That's what that oil represents. His presence in your life. Maybe you're lost. You don't know the Lord. Only trust, only trust Him. That's the message this morning. You can trust Him in your despair this morning, in your situation. You can shut your closet. Get in there and be alone with Him, and He'll show up with the Lord. I can promise you that. Let's do one more verse. One more verse. We'll give you a chance, then we'll close. Jesus is the truth, the way that leads you. Six months, and 
went to a cardiologist after I passed all the uh, EKGs and stress tests and whatever. The cardiologist says, you need a catheterization of your heart. Now, how I got the catheterization in four days, got it. They went in and done a catheterization, found an artery 99 to 100% blocked. 95 to 99 percent blocked, I'm sorry. They put a stent in and I feel good. And you know, Matthew 5, 14 says, you're the light of the world. Yeah. Don't put a basket on it, but put it on the pedestal where you'll shine. And I just could not mm -hmm. not do it. Amen. 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 speaks the word that he's a great physician. Well, he's got that bomb that he puts on that bomb of Gilead. Amen. Let's just don't want to preach on that more than preach to Amen. But we'll we'll uh, we'll close with that. So thank y'all for coming. Come back tonight and do some tracks with us. Put your fingerprint on them tracks. If somebody gets saved, that'll go to your account. That'll go to your account. I'm gonna ask Brother Daniel Litch to close some word of prayer. <laughs>